Hey kids, this is Ivan, how you doing? Long time ago, maybe a few years ago, my friend Anthony mentioned to me at one point that, you know, role-playing games at their heart are about making decisions. And at first I kind of was a little confused about that. I had to mull it over. And the more I thought about it, the more experiences I continued to have, I, I had to concede that, yeah, I think you're right. You know, during play, um, the game master and other players constantly make decisions. The interesting thing is why we make those decisions. What prompted us to make a decision that we do? Um, the decisions that we make will have a profound experience, uh, impact rather, on the experience that we have. And the experience that we want to have or want to create will influence the decisions that we make. Um, sounds obvious, doesn't it? Um, but I want to talk about that in relation to some things I've been talking about lately. Um, particularly the idea of making decisions in order to keep the game flowing or to um, make the game more exciting or more dramatic um, or to push a certain type of aesthetic or story or make it more like a movie. And also the narrative insertion of facts into the world to facilitate that sort of thing. Um, Spencer from Keep Off the Borderlands uh, goes by Free Thrall on YouTube. Um, uh, made a really cool comment about my last video. Said it seems to me that narrative insertion is about creating a seamless, a seamless external experience rather than having anything to do with the subject experience, subjective experience of the player. If I could just talk, I could, I could quote him. Uh, he also, in his latest episode of Keep Off the Barlands, which I think is episode two hundred fifty-two, uh, called The Grand Illusion. Uh, talks about this at some point, at some more length. I thought that was really cool in that he, he said the phrase that I was looking for for years. You know, narrative insertion is about creating a seamless external experience rather than having anything to do with the subject, subjective experience of the player. And, you know, during my last video, I think it was, I talked about the idea that, you know, um, deciding to narratively insert something or ask the GM a question, you know, may or be more or less uh, conducive to your immersion in character uh, depending upon your intention. And, you know, I talked a little bit about in that video, maybe, maybe in some previous videos about, you know, being in character as character and how certain behaviors can be antithetical to that experience. Uh, once again, that's, that's a statement I picked up or, or, you know, a quote I picked up from my friend Anthony, who talked about being in character as character and the idea being that it's, um, you know, you're looking through the lens of your character all the time. You're making your decisions as if you were the character. You're trying to have the experience that character is having in that, you know, imagined situation. You're trying not to make any decisions based on anything else. And you're trying not to see the world through anything else. You really want to be in their shoes. Uh, Ron Edwards would call this the possessor stance. Um, now, there are other kinds of experiences you can have in character, but they're just a little bit different. Your in-character experience may be more as author or as collaborator, where the decisions you make are just a little bit different and don't all come from the standpoint of the character. You know, as we, as we play these games and we're making these decisions as these characters, um, if we start to make decisions based on what would be dramatic, what would make it more like a movie, what would make it, um, let's say I'm, I'm, narrate, I'm tasked with the responsibility for narrating the failures of my character. If I start creating failures that really would screw the character because it would be interesting, you know, all these sort of things, we start pushing towards less of an in-character as character experience and more as an in-character as author or collaborator. And we're starting to play to create. And what are we creating? We're creating drama, we're creating a story, not a pre-planned story but we're pushing things in a certain direction. Maybe we're just pushing things uh, that look a little bit more like a movie. Maybe you just want to keep the action going. Maybe we're trying to create this seamless external experience. Um, so these, these decisions we make to insert the thing, they decide that the buildings are this far apart. So yes, the person I'm pursuing has jumped. I didn't see him jump, but I'm going to jump it, you know. Uh, so I've made up how you know far apart these buildings are. Uh, I really, you know, I need a tire. I need a tire iron because I've got somebody chasing me. So I look in the trunk and I don't look for a tire iron. I just grab the tire iron. You know, it's more of a seamless external experience. We're creating these things, but it's it's to keep the action flowing, to keep the story, the action flowing. If you get I get what I mean. And what I meant a couple of videos back is, you know, when we start to engage behaviors like that, and nothing I'm saying is that this is bad or wrong. So if you're hearing that, listen again. I'm not saying this is bad or wrong. What I'm saying is when we start to make decisions from, uh, you know, from those motivations, 
we are less and less in character as character. And so making decisions in that manner becomes less about the subject of ex subjective experience of the player, as Spencer so aptly put, and more about something else. So it can knock us out of a completely in-character experience. Once again, these things aren't wrong, they're not bad, but they will create a different experience. You know, Probably, if we're making this, these decisions, the experience that we want, which is great. But it's to me, it's fascinating um, to, to see how these things start to happen. And it's important to kind of, you know, understand what's going on. And believe me, it took me years to figure out what the heck was going on with me, with the decisions I made. You know, why did I like certain sessions? Why didn't I like certain sessions? You know, we, I haven't even touched up upon the idea of, you know, being in character as a game master. Are the, are the NPCs doing what they would do? Or are you having them do something that would be dramatic or exciting or push things in a certain direction? So hopefully you get the idea.